Welcome to Network Security Firewalls and VPNs. This is Lesson 1, Part 1, relating to Chapter 1, the Fundamentals of Network Security. Our learning objective is to explain the fundamental concepts of network security. Our key concepts of the chapter are that confidentiality, integrity, and availability are mandates for network resource security. Network security and its value to the enterprise, roles and responsibilities in network security, the impact of network infrastructure design on security, and the features, uses, and benefits of network security countermeasures. Trust, computers and networks. Trust is the confidence that other users will act in accordance with your organization's security rules, the belief that others are trustworthy. Third-party trust systems include digital certificates that a public certificate authority issues. The primary objectives and goals of information security are confidentiality and privacy, integrity and non-repudiation. Of course, non-repudiation means that you cannot say it did not come from you, and availability or uptime. Secondary objectives of goals of information security include authentication, privacy, authorization, and non-repudiation, all surrounding the core objectives of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The need for information security. Risk is the likelihood that a threat will exploit a vulnerability and the impact it will have on an organization. Threat is the possibility of a vulnerability being exploited. And a vulnerability is a weakness in a process or system that has the potential to adversely impact confidentiality, availability, or integrity. The seven domains of a typical IT infrastructure. We learned these in the Fundamentals of Information Security course. The user domain, which refers to actual users, whether they're employees, consultants, contractors, or other third-party users. Any user who accesses or uses the organization's IT infrastructure must review and assign, and sign an acceptable use policy, or AUP, prior to being granted access to the organization's IT resources and infrastructure. The workstation domain, which refers to the end user's desktop devices, such as a desktop computer, laptop, VOIP telephone, or other endpoint device. They typically require security countermeasures such as antivirus, anti-spyware, and vulnerability software patch management to maintain the integrity of the device. The local area network domain. This domain refers to the physical and logical local area network technologies such as uh, switched Ethernet, the 802.11 family of wireless LAN technologies used to support workstation connectivity. The LAN to WAN domain. This domain refers to the organization's internetworking and interconnectivity point between the LAN and the WAN network infrastructures. Routers, firewalls, demilitarized zones, and intrusion detection systems and prevention systems are commonly used as security monitoring devices in this domain. The remote access domain. This domain refers to the authorized and authenticated remote access procedures for users to remotely access the organization's IT infrastructure, systems, and domains. Pardon me, systems and data. Remote access solutions typically involve secure socket layer, 128-bit encrypted remote browser access, or encrypted virtual private network tunnels. The WAN domain. Organizations with remote locations require a WAN to interconnect them. Organizations typically outsource wide area network connectivity from service providers such as Verizon or Sprint for end-to-end -end connectivity and bandwidth. This domain typically involves routers, circuits, switches, firewalls, and equivalent gear at remote locations, sometimes under a managed service offering offered by the service provider. The system application domain. This domain refers to the hardware, operating system software, database software, client server applications, and data that is typically housed in the organization's data center and or computer rooms. Information assurance. Here we see authentication, non-repudiation, confidentiality, integrity, and availability surrounding the seven domains of a typical IT infrastructure. Network security goals vary from organization to organization. Often they include a few common mandates, such as to ensure the confidentiality of resources, protect the integrity of data, maintain the availability of the IT infrastructure, ensure the privacy of personally identifiable data, enforce access control, 
monitor the IT environment for violations of policy, and support business tasks the overall mission of the organization. The security policy. First thing you have to do is establish goals. Then you have to address risk, provide the roadmap for security, set expectations, link to business objectives, have a map of laws and regulations, and then there's are supported by standards, procedures, and guidelines. The creation of policies allows the risk of loss, destruction, or corruption of information to be mitigated. Policy awareness and training. Policy sets expectations. It must be well-defined. must address business needs and security concerns. It sets the expectations for the organization. Awareness not only promotes security, but keeps security at the front of users' minds. And training. Individuals understand their roles and responsibilities in the security security policy. An example of workstation infrastructures. Work group include they're usually small, have limited uses, no central authority, and the security policy is managed individually. Soho or small office home office. These are small, some level of central management, but they're not scalable. Client server. These are shared resources, larger networks, complexity, and centralized control. And of course, LAN versus wide area network, thin client and terminal services, remote access and virtual private networks, and boundary networks. Here's a typical work group. It shows the internet as outside the work group, a cable modem connecting the work group to it with an L2 switch and various workstations attached to it and a wireless router being used to connect what laptops wirelessly. Here's a typical client server network connected to the internet with a firewall between the web server and the internet, an L2 switch connecting the print server, the printer, a backup server, an external hard drive, then connected to another L2 switch where the workstations are connected and a wireless router connecting the laptops. A typical virtual private network shows the internet between the remote client and the private local area network. The tunnel created by the VPN on either end of the internet connection will ensure security. And here we see typical boundary networks. You have a DMZ or extranet deployed as a screen subnet with a three home firewall that connects the private LAN to the DMZ and the extranet. And the private LAN is connected by way of a firewall to that DMZ and then yet another firewall deployed uh, in an end tier configuration. This is the end of part one of chapter one.